Welcome to the course on Small Business Owner's Guide to Emergency Action Plans. This course is designed to equip you, the small business owner, with the knowledge and skills to develop and implement an OSHA, Compliant Emergency Action Plan, also known as an EAP, for your business. Why is this important? According to the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics, there were approximately 2.8 million non-fatal workplace injuries and illnesses reported by private industry employers in 2019. Having an effective EAP can significantly reduce the impact of such incidents on your business and employees. And remember, it's not a question of if an emergency will occur in your workplace, but when. Understanding OSHA's EAP Requirements The Occupational Safety and Health Administration, or OSHA, requires businesses to have an EAP under certain conditions. We'll delve into these requirements in detail. OSHA's requirements for EAPs are outlined in 29 CFR 1910 subpart E. This regulation mandates that an employer must have an EAP whenever an OSHA standard requires one. The minimum elements of an EAP as per OSHA include 1. Procedures for reporting a fire or other emergency. 2. Procedures for emergency evacuation, including type of evacuation and exit route assignments. 3. Procedures to be followed by employees who remain to operate or provide care before they evacuate. 4. Procedures to account for all employees after evacuation. 5. Procedures to be followed by employees performing rescue or medical duties. 6. The name or job title of every employee who may be contacted by employees who need more information about the plan or an explanation of their duties under the plan. In essence, your EAP should answer key questions such as, how is an emergency recognized? Who responds and what response is required? How is everyone notified if an evacuation is required? Where do people evacuate to and how is everyone accounted for? We'll explore each of these elements in detail in the next section. Types of emergencies in small businesses. Before we delve into developing your EAP, let's discuss the types of emergencies that can occur in a small business. These can range from natural disasters like floods, earthquakes, or severe weather events, to fires, chemical spills, or other accidents. Emergencies can also include medical emergencies, workplace violence, or even cyber attacks. Identifying potential emergencies specific to your business is the first step in creating an effective EAP. Developing your EAP. Developing an effective plan involves several key steps. Let's walk through an example. First, identify potential emergencies that could occur in your workplace. Let's say you own a restaurant. Potential emergencies could include kitchen fires, gas leaks, medical emergencies, or even natural disasters. Next, establish clear procedures for each type of emergency. For a kitchen fire, this could include activating the fire alarm, using the fire extinguisher, and evacuating the building through the nearest exit. Communication is crucial. Your EAP must be in writing and available for all employees to review. For businesses with 10 or fewer employees, the EAP may be communicated orally. Training is another key aspect. Employees need to be familiar with the EAP and their roles in it. Regular drills, conducted monthly, can help ensure everyone knows what to do in an emergency. Implementing and reviewing your EAP. Once your EAP is developed, it's time to implement it. This involves communicating the EAP to all employees and conducting regular drills. Reviewing and updating your EAP is also crucial. As your business changes, so too might the potential emergencies you face. Your plan should be reviewed and updated at least annually, or after an emergency has occurred. Regular reviews ensure your EAP remains relevant and effective. Remember, every employee plays a role in the EAP from those who report emergencies to those who assist in evacuations, everyone has a part to play in ensuring the safety of the workplace. Summary and next steps. We've covered a lot in this course, from understanding OSHA's requirements for emergency action plans to developing and implementing your own plan. Remember, having an effective emergency action plan is not just about compliance. It's about ensuring the safety of your employees and your business. We encourage you to take the next step and start developing your own emergency action plan. To assist you, we provided a range of resources and a quiz to test your understanding of the course content. Thank you for taking the time to invest in the safety of your workplace.